Greetings to one and all. I am Joel Silas, currently in the final year of computer engineering at JSPM's JSCOE Pune. Today we will go through unit number one of Introduction to Machine Learning. This is a course in the final year syllabus as prescribed by Savitri Bhai Phule, Pune University. So let us begin with the question that, what is programming? Now programming is nothing but it is the act of developing a set of instructions for the machine to process it and in order to perform a particular task to achieve the required goal state. Hence, if we consider about programming, we can say that we have a particular machine And this machine requires a particular input. Now input is optional. Some programs may require input, some may not. And also we need to instruct this machine by providing a set of instructions. This instructions forms the program. It forms the piece of code. So the instructions that we provide, it is the program. <laughs> Okay, so two kinds of inputs. One is the input for the program and one is the program itself. And this machine will develop a particular output based on the program and the input that we give. So the role of the programmer is to supply the program as well as the input as per requirement. And the task of the machine is to compute the end result that is the output. Now, the requirements of programming, as I said, explicitly need to be supplied are the program code and the input if required. For example, if the program is to find the prime numbers from one to 10. Now, always the prime numbers from one to 10 are the same and we want only the first prime numbers in this range. Hence, no particular input is required. We can hard code these values. We can hard code this range. But suppose the program is finding the sum of two numbers. Now, these two numbers will keep changing as per the requirement of the program. Hence, these two are the inputs that need to be given explicitly by the programmer. So these are the certain algorithms which may require input or which may not require input by the user. Okay. So till now we have seen that machines will work as per the way we instruct them. That means we can determine the actions performed by the machine. But what if machines can perform tasks on their own without taking the efforts of developing the program, without developing the logic, the user can simply ask. Now this calls for the concept of machine learning in which the machines will learn on their own. Now let us consider a particular scenario in order to understand the concept of machine learning. Machine learning, for that we'll consider this particular scenario. Suppose you need to buy mangoes. Now you are at the shop. And you do not taste the mangoes. Since you do not taste the mangoes, you are assuming that the color may be bright. If the color is bright, this is a particular condition that we need to check. Suppose color bright matches. Yes. Then we can conclude that the mangoes are sweet. But suppose the color does not match, we can conclude that mangoes are not sweet. So this is one conclusion that we do at the shop without tasting the mangoes. But what if there is one more scenario in which we reach home at home, we taste the mango. Now on tasting, we realize that color, though it is equal to bright, 
this condition has been satisfied but still say 80% of the mangoes are sweet and remaining 20% are say not sweet this means that our previous assumption in which we had thought that if the mangoes are sweet if the mangoes are bright if the color is bright then only they are sweet this was our assumption but now when we reached home we found out that our assumption was wrong and then we found out one more condition by observation that the necessary condition is that color has to be bright and the size of the mango needs to be big if these two conditions are satisfied then only the mangoes are sweet this is another condition that we have derived that means we need both the conditions not one not any one but both hence more the experience more the training examples better the accuracy and better the efficiency hence this set of requirements can be updated manually each and every time as per the experience now suppose we have another scenario where we change the fruit cellar there we have another list of observations hence by this way we need to keep on updating our observations strengthening our facts and then we can reach a particular firm basis that yes if these are the satisfying conditions then this is the result hence we can define machine learning as it is when the machines learn with experience e learning by experience e in order to perform performance in order to perform the tasks hence by considering these three parameters we can say that a computer program is set to learn from experience e with respect to some class of tasks t and perform measure p and if the performance is improving it is only due to experience so experience of the task t as measured by p improves the experience that is in short we can say that experience of performing tasks is directly proportional to the performance this is the relation that we can derive okay i hope this is clear next we can consider certain examples one is where uber drivers at new travel then the drivers need to be located in that particular place. how does uber manage this that our location that we need to travel the drivers are available in the vicinity google map knows this because at the time of travel due to heavy traffic and other conditions there are suggestions given by the passengers these suggestions are recorded and whatever inputs are got as feedback they can be used to improve the performance of google maps or to provide more accurate results more customized results to the users for example we can consider the difference between the actual journey time of the customer and the predicted time taken by the customer to reach the destination okay the actual time difference between the predicted time based on this we can understand that how much error is there in our prediction and next time hence forth we can reduce this error hence by experience we are learning okay now in this session let us see a particular introduction to machine learning then we'll see types of machine learning difference between supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning and some use cases and some other topics subsidiary secondary topics as well 
so as already discussed machine learning we can also say that it is a subset of ai it is a subset of artificial intelligence which provides machines with the ability to learn automatically or implicitly as per a function of improvement in experience without being explicitly programmed okay so if we compare our traditional programming with the machine learning let me show you a block diagram so our traditional programming we provide input to the machine we give the logic that is the program also the user has to write and the output will be generated by the machine so these are by the user this is by the user and this is generated by the machine in case of machine learning what happens is we have a particular machine we may provide the input in terms of data sets or sometimes without any particular data set without any input that time also machines may work it will generate the program or it will generate the logic it will generate the patterns and based on the input received or the input already given or the input which is not required and based on the program that the machine will generate the output will be generated or we may also provide the output hence there are certain optional parameters there are certain differences mainly what you can understand is that the input and the output will be provided by the user and the machine will generate a particular program but what are the benefits if we ourselves are supplying the output so to clarify this further i will say that we have a machine initially we may provide certain input initially we may provide certain output based on this the machine will develop the mapping function the machine will develop the mapping function that is the output will be generated as a function of the input some particular mapping function between these will be generated after generating the mapping function which is referred to as the program for a particular set of instances next time when we give the input next time when we try to give the input then what will happen we do not have to provide output because this is the second time we are giving the input the program is already available with the machine so based on this input based on the program the machine will be able to develop the output which will be the result okay so first time we may have to provide input and output machine will generate the program second time out onwards input and the program will be available and the output will be generated by the machine i hope this is clear okay so machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence it focuses on designing of systems thereby allowing them to learn and make predictions based on some experience okay so this is what is machine learning so let us see some differences between artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning artificial intelligence is a technique which enables machines to mimic the human behavior mimicking of human behavior now here we can also try to understand a particular turing test in turing test what happens is you can consider three particular rooms in one room we have the judge in one room we have a machine 
or computer and in another room we have another human being now this judge is also a human being okay now we are going to connect these three entities by a particular interface now the judge will send certain typed messages to the machine and to the human being these particular mes messages may be certain questions so the question will come from the judge to the machine and to the human being the same question and the machine will try to perform certain analysis and the machine will give the answer machine will give back to the judge also the human being based on his own understanding will develop an answer and provide it to the human judge okay so based on this we need to understand the judge has to understand which answer is from the machine there are two answers that the judge is receiving he has to understand that which answer is from the machine now suppose the judge is not able to identify that which answer is from the machine he thinks that both the answers are from a human being the judge does not know which is the machine which is the human being or both are human beings or both are machines the judge has to identify whether the answer is from a human being or whether it is from a machine if he fails to understand if the judge fails to understand that the answer is from a human being or a machine that means the machine qualifies to become a human being we can say that the machine is also a human being for the judge because he is not able to distinguish between the human being and the judge so the machine has proved itself to be a human being to the judge okay so this is called as turing test if the machine is able to prove that i am like a human being that is if the judge fails to understand that one of it is a machine then we can say that turing test has passed means the machine is quite intelligent so that was artificial intelligence now what is machine learning machine learning is a subset of ai machine learning is a subset of ai it uses certain statistics certain mathematics algebra and various other parameters by which we can improve the performance of the machine it can learn by doing learn by on its own it can learn on its own then another thing is deep learning deep learning is a subset of ml now deep learning has its own advantages such as automatic extraction of features the important parameters which can determine the output these particular parameters are automatically determined by deep learning it uses certain concepts like convolutional neural networks and various other concepts so deep learning is a subset of machine learning all the three are not the same we saw the difference between ai ml and dl that is deep learning now how does machine learning work we can provide a particular training data the machine will learn based on this data so it will develop a particular algorithm this is called as ml algorithm it will be trained then based on this algorithm it will perform it will find a particular model based on this training data it can perform certain ml algorithm and hence certain model will be developed the training data can consist of training examples such as if this is the input then what should be the output such mapping can be done so we will give an input also we will give an output also it will the machine learning <clears throat> the machine will develop the mapping function between the input and output this mapping function is called the ml algorithm a particular model will be developed based on this algorithm so this ml algorithm now which has been developed based on the mapping this ml algorithm now if it receives certain new input new data it has to predict what will be the possible output right once it has been trained based on new data it has to predict what is the output now if the predicted output matches with the actual output the predicted output and actual output if they are matching 
we can say that the model is successful. If the predicted output and actual output are matching, we can say that the model is successful. But suppose the predicted output and the actual output are not matching, we can say that the model is unsuccessful. Okay. Now, if the model is unsuccessful, we need to improve it. We need to improve the accuracy of the model. If we want to improve the accuracy of the model, we need to reiterate the entire training process. That means all this process has to be continued in loops. Retrain, retrain, retrain. And if the accuracy is quite high, you can stop. You can stop. Okay, so this is how the machine learning works. Mainly the thing is that keep training until you get a good accuracy and then you can stop and confidently say that for new data, my machine will perform well. It will give the exact expected and authentic output. So these are some machine learning steps. One is collection of data. collection of data, then data wrangling. This is called as a data cleaning process. That means certain things are applied such as transformation, normalization, standardization, feature scaling, and many other things so that we can prepare our data. Okay, this can be done over here. Then analysis of data. We can analyze that are there any missing values? For example, if there are four parameters, only three are present. One of the parameters is missing. This will cause deprecation in the accuracy of the model. Hence, are there any missing values? Or do we need to uh, get the data from certain other resources as well? Do we need to perform certain integration? So analysis. Wrangling means cleaning. And analysis means identifying whether the data set is eligible for training or not. Then finally, we will <coughs> train the algorithm. It will develop the mapping function. Then we'll test the algorithm on new input. We will test the algorithm on new input. And we'll check whether the output is satisfactory or not. If the actual output and predicted output are matching, we will deploy the model. If conditions are satisfied, we'll deploy the model. If not satisfied, again, we'll go to the training phase or again, we'll go to the cleaning phase. That means we'll try to eliminate the loopholes. Okay, now in the deployment also, if we find certain errors in future, we'll have to come back and rectify those errors. So whenever we are developing, there are two stages we can say. One is developing. And the other is deploy. We usually do the development in an environment called as sandbox environment. It is called a sandbox environment in which we do the development. And the deployment is done on the client's architecture. Okay, these are the two environments in which we usually work. Now, what are the characteristics of machine learning? Characteristics of machine learning. It uses the data to detect patterns. To detect the patterns in the data set and adjust the program actions accordingly. It focuses on development of computer programs that can teach themselves, teaching themselves to grow and scale and range when exposed to new data. That is what we have been doing till now, which enables computers to find hidden insights through an iterative algorithm without being explicitly programmed, without the user having to program, the machine has to learn on his own, on its own. Now there are there is a broad classification of data that is structured, unstructured, and semi-structured. 
now let us go through these types of data these are the types of data now structured data is nothing but the ones which are available in tabular formats maybe in terms of records okay this is called a structured data unstructured data comes from pdfs audio files or video files or some logs processing logs etc these are the sources of unstructured data and then we have semi structured data which is usually like maybe xml format or json format that means there is some kind of structure but it is not completely structured for example json means key value pairs uh, in python also we have seen dictionary which consists of key value pairs like a particular key and a particular value then we can have a second key and a particular value and so on key value pairs this is called as json so there is a particular structure key value is the structure but it is not completely as a tabular format so it is semi structured data clear now another classification of data that is this one we have data which is qualitative or we can say categorical we have quantitative or which is also called as numerical within quality qualitative we have nominal and ordinal and within quantitative discrete and continuous within discrete and continuous also we have something called as interval and ratio within continuous also we have something called as interval and ratio fine now let us see what is this now quantitative data let's see the quantitative data first it is expressed as a number which can be quantified or it can be represented by line graphs bar graphs scatter plots okay these numbers or these numerical values can be represented by lines bar graphs scatter plots etc what is this answer what question does this answer quantitative data what question does it answer it answers the question like how much or how many that means quantity these are the questions that are answered by this for example weight of a person temperature count of persons scores of the persons and so on now two types of quantitative data that is discrete discrete involves only integers or decimal values decimal number system or you can say float values double and so on that means numerical data type for example number of students in a class number of questions answered correctly okay now in certain cases the count cannot be floating point values for example you cannot say one and a half students human beings are always complete that is whole the natural numbers now in continuous it can be measured on a scale a particular range of values okay these are definite values integers only mean okay or some specific set of values whereas continuous means a range in which you can definitely have integers also floats also or decimal values and all those values a particular range of values and these can be further divided into further final levels for example height can be from 1 uh, maybe 13.2 cm to maybe 100.1 cm or some range like that time also 5.1 can be the time or you can say 5.5 that is 5 hours 30 minutes and so on now what is interval 
and what is range and ratio interval is nothing but a particular section of values for example we can say that 78 degree celsius to 79 degree celsius that means this is an interval of 1 degree celsius but ratio is nothing but comparison ratio is comparison for example we can say that a 10 kg weight is twice of a 5 kg weight that means if we say 10 kg upon 5 kg the ratio is nothing but 1 by 2 that is nothing but 1 is to 2 this is ratio now let us talk about qualitative data qualitative means we cannot express it as a number it can be represented by qualitative means it can be not represented as a number it can be words or pictures and so on it can answer the questions like how why it happened how it happened and so on for example the qualitative data can be colors names age groups and so on now within qualitative data we have the sections like nominal and ordinal now nominal means it is the labeling we are attaching a particular tag with the entity and this cannot be ordered the ordering or ranking of this data is not possible for example we can say gender it can be male or female let us consider these two classes only for now so we are giving the gender as a label that it is male or that person is female but can we say male? so nominal means labeling is possible but ordering is not possible just okay so this was how we have seen the meaning of nominal now let us go ahead for ordinal ordinal is also a kind of qualitative data categorical data but we can order it we can label it also and we can order it also labeling is possible ordering is also possible however arithmetic operations cannot be performed on such data we can of create a hierarchy of this for example we can say that in a race the person who appears first has a higher rank than the one who appears second 
than the one who appears third. So we can create a particular ordering or ranking of the data, which was not possible in nominal. For example, economic status, low, medium, high, or the sales experience, maybe two years will be less experience as compared to five years experience and so on. So we are done with types of data. In the next video, we'll try to see what are the different kinds of analytics and then what is supervised, unsupervised, and semi-reinforcement um, learning and certain other concepts, differences, certain examples of machine learning and so on. So this is it for this le particular lecture. The next topic will be conducted next time. Okay. Thank you for giving me a patient listening.